Howdy folks, welcome back to Regeneration TV. We're here at Washington DC for a special entertainment with David. What? What's up? Say how's up. And we're here at the Bible Museum here at Washington DC. It's only a few years old. And I don't think we're supposed to be doing video, but I'm still gonna do it. Because I'm a rebel. You know, but we just entered and we're gonna see what's up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Bible Museum at Washington DC. And it's a fairly new museum and a lot of people enjoy it. And the great thing is that it's six floors of Bible museum stuff. So who knows what we'll find here. It's my first time. It's Carol. Carol's first time. Juan Juan's first time. Everybody's first time. Because we're not usually here at Washington DC. But it's free. There's a donation you might want to do. It's $15 usually. It's a lot of walking. But enjoy guys. So just throughout this whole Bible, you can see that there's very interactive things to do. You can press on them. Yeah, my first memories when uh, mom uh, used to read to me when I was very young, 
And then there's a lot of literature and books and pictures here and stories. And this is just the first level. And it's pretty cool. I really don't know what the clock is for. But the good thing is it's counting up. It's not counting down. So probably they haven't figured out the end of the world yet. This is the old printing pr press that they use to print the Bible with. Which is pretty neat. In a new smudge resistant ink that Gutenberg likely created from linseed oil, turpentine, and other components. The workers would then dab that ink on the metal type, covering it from edge to edge. Let's see if you're smarter than a, a talk reader. No, I don't think so. Which profit oh, has for? Oh, you're wrong. Jeremiah did that. I even knew that. In ancient Israel. What was the name of the goat who released into the wilderness on the day of annulment? Free goat, holy goat, scapegoat. It's called God's goat. Scapegoat? Ah. Which man said blank they had to obey God. Oh my goodness. Martha Luther King. A person that is like a lamb to the slaughter. In the face of adversary is what is it? Mm. You are smart. So yeah, they have a lot of cool games in here. Great for kids too. They have a kids section as well. Very interactive. And then we're just going to go through it. And look at. A wall of names. I believe that every name in the Bible. They have a whole wall of it. Let's go see what else they have. something remarkable just happened we found Alphys's Bible that belonged to Alvis himself look it's even engraved I know in today's world we can just engrave everything but I believe this is Alphys's Bible it's not fake it has a CD next to it that's why <laughs> Apparently back back in the day they had fashion too. Yeah, this piece is from the Freeman King Oh, I thought this is back in the day's fashion. I was about to say. So what we went through was the impact of the Bible onto the world. But this room is just for the impact of the Bible now. It's 
pretty cool. David's enjoying it too. Oh, bro, you get to design your own. So you pick a circle. These are all circles that people design. Design your own, David. Which one's your, which reverse do you want? I want to put the, the verse that I love the most. I believe it's Jesus wept. <laughs> That's the only verse I know by heart. Jesus wept. But yeah, you get to select it and then put a nice little background to it. Boom, select and then put a little nice color to it. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Amen. Add a little blur to it because we're professionals here. Done. Thank you. Look at that. It's gonna show up somewhere. Find mine. If we can find mine, bonus. Find mine. David, find mine. It's right there. No, it has to pop up here somewhere. No? Oh man, you get to... Re this is crazy. You get to record your own story in here. Like, it's like a little private room. You close up. And then you get to sit down in front of a camera. Join the conversation. Are you 18? Yes. Welcome to the Joshua Machine recording booth. First, make sure you have nothing in your hands. Oh, your bag. I can't do it because I have something in my hand. And it's all my lovely viewers. So that was the impact of the Bible. Next level. Let's go. This is just beautiful architecture. So the first one's the New Testament. So it looks like it's a bunch of shows of the New Testament. The world of Jesus. Look, that's what one shekel looks like.
fun of him and they laugh at him. And so Jesus sends the women away with the exception of three of his disciples and also the parents. And then he goes to the little girl who's died. He says, Talitha Kum, which in Aramaic means little girl, get up, arise. And so this little girl begins to sit up. She begins breathing again. She's living again. And so the parents are astonished by this. And Jesus says, get her something to eat for she is hungry. That's where we find that miracle taking place. Now, you have many of the different cities that you would find um, where Jesus did his ministry. You have Bethsaida. Um, it's where he multiplied the five loaves and two fish. Capernaum, as I mentioned, he did many miracles there. Tabga, that's where he called the 12 disciples. Gennesaret is where he would have called specifically the disciple Peter, who was a fisherman. Um, Peter was uh, fishing out on the, uh, off the shores of Gennesaret, and uh, he comes back with nothing one night. He's washing and cleaning his nets, and Jesus is teaching on the shores, and Jesus says to him, come, let us go up into the waters for a catch. Peter, who had been fishing all night and just finished cleaning and washing his nets, uh, uh, basically doesn't want to and, and says, I've been out on the waters all night. He contests and says, I, uh, I've been out on the waters all night. I haven't caught anything. And in his mind, he was probably thinking, you know, this man, he's a great teacher and a great rabbi, but he's insane if he thinks I'm going to go back out into the waters and let down my nets for a catch when I just finished cleaning my nets. Also, the reason why he would have contested is because it's morning time, and so many of the boats that you would see out on the waters, none of them are fishing. Many of them are either uh, coming back from a long night of fishing or getting ready to conduct trade. The reason for this, the reason why fishermen fish during nightfall, is because the fish, they feed at night, but also they can't see the nets at night. That's why it's more beneficial to fish during nightfall. So this is why Peter would have contested. Well, Jesus insists, and so he agrees. He goes out into the waters. Jesus says, cast your nets to the right side of the boat. And Peter obeys, probably very reluctantly, but he lets down his nets. And as he brings them up, he catches such a large sum of fish, so much, in fact, that his nets started to break. And he has to call for help from another boat. But as they're bringing in the fish, the nets break even further, and all the weight of the fish caused the boats to sink. And so Peter begins to realize, this man that I thought was just a teacher and a rabbi, he's so much more than that. He's a prophet. He's been sent by God. How else would he have known where the fish were? And so he begins to feel condemnation and shame and guilt. And in that shame and guilt, he begins to say of himself, go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. But Jesus does not affirm that. He says, come and follow me. Become my disciple, and I will make you a fisher of men. I could go on and on about many of the stories of Jesus, um, but I'm probably going to leave it at that. Um, does anyone have any questions? No, it looks good. It looks nice. No, no podemos parar. Step inside the dark shop. Grab a lock. Tonight, the families of Israel gather together on the verge of a transformation. But why is this night different from all other nights? After generations of slavery in Egypt,
All right, guys, you just got some sneak peek stuff. I wasn't supposed to record them in there, but I did because I'm a rebel. You already know, Carol, we're rebels. David, did you record anything? Because you're a pansy. We are rebels here. So if you don't get any audio in there, don't be surprised because they were watching me. I know it. There's a 50% chance I get kicked out now. Or shoot. But who knows? We're off to the next level. All right, next up is the history of the Bible. This floor is literally everything about the Bible. It has the past history about the Bible. It has also interesting pieces of the, what do you call it? Dead Sea Scrolls. And it is full of just Bibles and Bibles and Bibles. I've never seen so many old Bibles. Some of these are pocket Bibles and they don't even fit in my pocket. But they're pretty cool. So, pretty interesting, guys. They also have Hebrew scrolls here. But I can't. They're all uh, ripped up. So apparently they have scrolls here 
from the old days and some of them are sensitive and sensitive to light or something like that now the ones they have are right here these are the scrolls I was talking about they're super old some of them are super brittle you can see some of them look fairly new but how they preserve them is pretty cool so we are in a place where it's pretty cool it's actually showing us language with a full bible language with new translation language with at least 25 chapters of the bible translated languages with bible translated in progress languages where bible translate has not yet begun and as you can see is this section is pretty full right here and it looks nice but the ones that i want to show you is the languages that don't have a bible yet and it's all these that's unbelievable but at least we're working on it because those are in progress right there so which one aduj er afade afghan sign language so all these are yet to be done so if anybody knows how to do that get on it quickly all right regenerators we're almost there we're going to the next floor we're about to go to this new exhibit and then we're gonna go get something to eat all right this is an exhibit specially made for israel israel only israelians can come into the exhibit but we got vip access because she has israeli blood no she doesn't no it's open to everybody so let's go check it out we got lost guys the exhibits over here they said god has chosen people would know where exactly it is i'm like Since I got embarrassed over there, yeah. I was like, which one of these stones did David use to kill Goliath? I know you have it. In I there. know. <laughs> that's David, you know, for me, that's the story. I mean, you know, so these are like, you know, they use Roman, you know, for like maybe, you know, hunting, you know, something, or okay. maybe for war, you know, something. Definitely, I know that. But I guess, you know, David used the same thing. But I mean, that's just a story. Just a story, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, that was it, guys. We just finished the uh, little the Bible museum. Do you have fun? Yeah, it was really nice. Great. It was really nice. She said. Hope it was nice. It was super expensive. Actually, it was free. But thank you for watching. Y'all know what time it is. Time to subscribe. And five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. You didn't say it. Okay. Either way, subscribe, like, follow us on IG, and come support. Thank you for watching.